Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up a reusable choice field that you can use across all of SharePoint. And what I mean is that you're going to have a list of something that's the same across your whole organization and doesn't ever change. For example, departments or locations, things that are set, and you're going to want to allow for that selection in multiple lists across all your sites. I get this request a lot and people aren't sure how it is you're supposed to go about this. I'm going to show you an easy way to set that up and you can walk through using the steps I'll show in the video. So now let's get SharePoint smart. Okay, here I am in SharePoint Online. I'm in one of my sites in my SharePoint tenant, which is called Invoices. And we're gonna begin by creating the scenario that we're going to be addressing. So I'm gonna to go to Site Contents. I'm gonna make a new list called Projects. Um, obviously, this could be for anything. We're just going through an example and you can follow these same steps in your SharePoint environment. So there's my new list called projects. And I'm going to keep things very simple. So we'll just go with the default title field. And this is going to be for a field that we want to have called locations. And so in my environment, this is a fictional company. We're just going to say that it's always the same locations no matter what. So I'm going to go into the list settings screen and this is what we would normally do. So I would just make a choice field, I'd call it location, and then I'd pick choice, and then I would put in my location. So I'd type those in, say okay, I've got Chicago and Houston, etc. I'd type those options and that's fine, that'll work fine, you won't have any issues the situation we're trying to address is where I need to reference these locations in all kinds of different lists all over SharePoint. It keeps coming up over and over again and these are my company locations. Generally they don't change, they're always the same and I don't want to have to keep doing this. And also if they do change, I want to change it in one place. I don't want to have to change it for all of those different lists every time. Now there's the option to do lookup fields, but that doesn't help us in this new flat architecture. Microsoft encourages us to create new sites from the SharePoint Admin Center, and we tend to have lots of sites. These lookup fields only work in individual sites, so I can't have a lookup field that pulls data from another site. So that's not going to help us. So let me cancel out of there. and. This is what we need to do. There is a functionality that's been a part of SharePoint for a long time, which is generally unfamiliar to most users, and that is the concept of managed metadata. Luckily for you, this is uh, easy to address in the situation that we have. This concept of managed metadata applies in all kinds of different scenarios. We're not gonna worry about um, all of those larger concepts and complexity as it relates to this functionality. We're just focused on this one specific use case. We just want to have a choice field that we can reference um, centrally in SharePoint across all the sites. So we're going to focus on that. The first thing that needs to take place, if you're a SharePoint admin, you can do these steps. Otherwise, you need to request your SharePoint admin to do this first part for you. So we need to go into administration for Microsoft 365 and we need to go to the SharePoint Admin Center. So I'm going into my SharePoint Admin Center and then once in that main landing page we need to go to the section that says Content Services. And under Content Services is Term Store. And this is key to what we need to do to get this set up. Now, if you are your SharePoint admin, of course you can do this step, otherwise you can reference this video and ask them to do this for you. 
you need to be set up as a term store admin. Okay, so that's very simple. Um, either you or your SharePoint admin can put your name in here and it just means that you will be one of the users who is allowed to update this data that we're going to create. So this must happen before anything else. Now, if you are a SharePoint admin, you can, of course, manage these term sets from this location. But if you are not, um, you can do this directly in SharePoint. So since I am a term store admin, I can exit out of this admin center. I don't need to be in this interface anymore. So I'll close out of there. Now, once you are designated as a term store admin, then you'll, will, you will have the ability to create this special uh, choice field that we're going to do. So you need to go to the root of your site. If you're in a subsite, you need to go up to the main site. Subsites generally aren't used very much anymore. They're used much less anyway. So you go to the uh, site information and then go to view all site settings. And then under site administration, you're going to see term store management. It's the last option. Generally, this is the interface we were just in. The key difference is that you can get to this um, when you're a term store administrator, even if you're not a SharePoint admin, which is key. Okay, so because you are added to term store, you can get into this interface and then you can expand out these accordion sections just to see what's here. What we're interested in is the uh, global term groups. The term global is important to us. This is telling us that what we're setting up here is across the whole SharePoint environment, irrespective of which SharePoint site you're in. So the first thing we want to do is add a term group. You can think of this as a folder. The name of this isn't specially important. I'm trying to do this for company locations, so I'm going to go ahead and do add term group, and I will just call it uh, WWC locations. Very simple. That's all there is to it. You can even see there's a folder icon next to it. Um, now. Once I have a term group established, I can add a term set. So you'll see I have it highlighted. So my new term group called WWC locations. And now I want to add a term set to that term group. Okay, now the naming becomes more important because this will appear in the interface later. So I'm going to call this simply locations. I don't need to say anything more specific. I want it to have a general name like that and just hit enter. And now I have a term um, set and I can um, add terms to that. Now, normally all these default settings should be fine. There are um, all kinds of different ways that metadata can be used in SharePoint. You can, for example, have something called metadata navigation. Um, and there's um, lots of different things you can do, but we're just focused on our specific use case. Now I'm simply going to add locations. The way I do that is to click on add term. And just as you might hope, it's very simple. I'm going to just have four locations for my scenario. So I've got Chicago. Okay, that's added. I reselect my term set and now I'm going to add uh, another one, which will be Houston. Okay, and reselect my term set. We'll do San Diego. Whoops, uh, San Diego. And then I'll do one more. That will be Winston Salem. Okay, and again, the default options are going to be fine for our scenario. Notice when I select the term set, the under the default settings, the sort order by default is going to be alphabetical. So I don't see them alphabetical here in the left. Don't worry about that. Those will appear alphabetically when we get back to SharePoint. That's all there is to it. That's all that I needed to do to make this 
term set available so that I can make this special field. So um, we won't need to do anything more in the term store. Now, going forward, if you need to make adjustments to options in this, this is where you would do it. And anybody who's designated as the term store administrator can get to this interface to add or remove options um, to the list. Okay, so let's go back to SharePoint and now we're gonna go ahead and set up our field. Okay, so here's my projects list and I'm gonna add a column. So in my list, I want to have a field for location and I'm gonna tap into this globally available uh, term set. So I'm gonna say location. Now, this is where you're gonna select manage metadata. It's the last option um, for the different types of fields that you can make. I want this to be required and in the default view, you could do multiple values. Normally in a choice, you want them to select one option. So I'm gonna make sure that's unchecked. Um, and then these other defaults are fine. This is where you're gonna select your term set. So this is an accordion view. It expands out when you pick options. And as you expand that out, you're gonna see what you just created. So what I want is my new term set, which is called WWC locations. So all I need to do is click on that there. In fact, WWC locations is the term group. What I need to click on is the term set, which is one below. And that's simply locations. You can see it's highlighted in yellow. That is exactly what I want. And everything else is fine, except for one additional thing. The way this presents in the UI is a little bit different than the normal drop-down choice field. Functionally, it's going to work the same, but you'll see that it's slightly different, and I'm going to put some description in here to guide my users. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, add some instructions. I'm going to say type or click tag on right. You'll see what I mean uh, when we get to the form in one second. There's my field. So what's cool about this is I can now make this location field in any SharePoint list across all the SharePoint environment, and it's always going to map back to that centrally managed list of locations that I just created. And if I want to add or remove from those, I only ever need to update in that one place. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a record and see what's going on here. Okay, let's see. Apple's project. Whoops, let me do a refresh here. Okay, Apple's project. Okay, so let's look at the user interface and see what's going on. It says type term to tag or tag. So there's some semantics in terms of how it's presented in the interface. Um, just different than a choice field, but functionally it's going to work exactly the way that we want. Now this is uses in auto-complete mode or auto-suggest. There's a lot of different terms around this, but what you're going to see is instead of a drop-down, I can start typing and it's going to suggest to me based on the options that you have in there. If I'm type doing Chicago, as soon as I type C, it suggests Chicago. So um, that's just the mode in which it displays. Now, Alternatively, the user can click on the tag. Now you can understand why I put the description in. So it said type or click tag on right. So if they click on the tag, there are the options. And you know, just as we wish, um, they're only going to be able to pick one of those. So they click apply and it's in there. It's still a required field. Um, so we'll make sure we get the response. Um, it's just the way that this special uh, metadata uh, field functionality works. So I save that, it's going to save out. It stores in the list as a regular text value and that's it. That's everything that you needed to do to get this set up. That's really all there is to it. That's all that you need to do to be able to create these choice fields which can be used repeatedly across your whole SharePoint environment.
Now, unfortunately, there are some limitations. I can't, for example, make that appear as a dropdown picker. This is just the manner in which that type of field works, the metadata column. That being said, you can provide some instructions to your users to help guide them a little bit, uh, make things a bit easier to understand, but this will let you achieve your goal to where you can have one centrally located list. Only your term store admins will have the ability to update or change the options that would appear in that. But it will save you from these scenarios where you're having to make these updates all over the place in your environment for things that you reference over and over again, like departments or company locations, things like that. So now you know how to set up your own special choice field, which can appear and be reused across all of your SharePoint environment. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below the video. And thank you.